After you've installed LabVIEW, you need to get the FTC Toolkit. You can go to usfirst.org and download it from the links there. If you're using a Mac, you're going to get a package to install. Go ahead and install it. Follow the instructions. And it should install correctly. There's lots of other information at the FTC website, including information about uh, programming templates and Samantha modules, etc. Go ahead and open LabVIEW, create a program, and you want to use the FTC arm and gripper. That is going to hold the autonomous and teleop templates that you need to use. You'll see in the list of files that there's already an autonomous program. There's a communication loop which you do not need to change and then there is a sequence block for you to put your autonomous code in. Teleop is a little different this year. You're going to click underneath the remote control on default configuration and you will need to set up your controller inside of this file. And it's going to be a little different than the teleop from last year. All right, let's connect to our brick. So click choose NXT, select your brick. If you never need to change the name, you can click on NXT terminal down at the bottom. And there is a rename button option. In the NXT terminal, you have some other options as well. You can view the files on the brick, delete files, you can check the battery information and also update the firmware. Let's take a look at the robot that I have built. It's a pretty simple robot. In the past we had the motor configuration tool. Now we have the schematic editor and the goal of this is to wire up on your computer similar to your robot all the motors and sensors that are going to plug into your NXT brick. If your brick is plugged in it will give information about the battery and the free space and the firmware version. If you have NXT motors those get plugged into motor port A, B, or C and you can choose them. Right now I'm not using any. Ports 1, 2, 3, and 4 are used for motor controllers and sensors, and you can choose those. I have a motor controller plugged into port 1 and a touch sensor on port 2. Coming out of my motor controller, I have two motors. My robot's four-wheel drive, so I have two motors on my left and two motors on my right. The information about the motors will show up on the left hand side of your schematic diagram. Make sure you give your motors good names that represent what they do so that when you are programming you'll be able to refer to them. Sometimes you want your motors to work in reverse that is also an option in that panel. Out of my motor controller is a second motor controller for the right side of my robot. And I need to add the two motors for those as well. Again, name those motors, and you may, again, want to enable them to be in reverse, or if you are using a shaft encoder, you might want to give that information as well. Make sure you save your schematic diagram. Go ahead and close it. Now we are ready to start programming. I could write my code in the autonomous program, but I'm just going to create a new VI targeted for NXT so I don't need to set up my Samantha module quite yet. So it'll show up underneath programs. Control click to bring up the menu. 
These are the blocks for NXT programming. There's NXT IO. The ones we really want to use are for Tetrix to get my Tetrix motors moving. I want to grab two move DC motor blocks and then I will also want them to stop at some point. Now I need to give these blocks some information, specifically what motors I want to have these move. Control click to bring up the menu and create a constant. There's now a block with a pull down menu. You can choose the name of the motor that you want to move. If you want to move another motor, you can push the down button and select a second motor. I need to do the same thing for my left side motors. Next I want to give a power to these blocks. Create a constant. Let's say I want them to go at 50%. Give that to both motors. The left hand side motors are going in the opposite direction since they're on the opposite side of the robot. I can use the negate block to make it negative 50 and give that as the power to both of those blocks, both of those motors. Let's say I want my robot to drive until something pushes the touch sensor. So I go back to the palette and find the wait for time block, change it to a wait for touch block. I want it to wait until it is pressed. I need to create a constant to tell it what port the sensor is on, and it was on port 2. Wire all the blocks into the correct order. I also want to tell the stop motor blocks which motors to stop. So wire those back to the constants from the beginning of the program. Download or deploy the program onto your robot and then test it out. You can see that it runs until it's pressed.